Proverbs chapter 20, verse 9 says, Who can say? Who can say? that I have made myself clean and I am pure from sin. Proverbs chapter 20, verse nine says, who can say I've made my heart clean and I'm pure from sin? What this powerful text was talking about, a question where you can evaluate whether or not your heart is clean. When your heart gets clean, there's energy. There's energy for sanctification. There's energy for focus. There's energy for productivity. There's energy for forgiveness. There's energy for servanthood. There's energy for prayer. There's prayer energy. When your heart is clean, there's energy to do right things. See, weariness is not a pure heart. It's a perverted heart. A perverted heart has difficulty emotionally. A perverted heart has difficulty, uh, difficulty mentally. So when the heart is not pure, it rejects truth. It rejects things that are of the kingdom, things that are of the spirit, things that are of the Lord. When the heart is impure, it doesn't grasp the grace to overcome something. It justifies weakness. So a lot of times people's heart have been impure because they have made what was under their feet over their head. Just think about that. You never let what's under your feet get over your head. The book of Deuteronomy, Moses got the revelation from the Lord that you shall be the head and not the tail above and never beneath. Proverbs chapter 20, verse nine, Solomon is asking, who can say I have made my heart clean and I am pure from sin. Now, since you notice this phrase, I am pure from sin. So when sin is present, purity is not. There is a distance between purity. There's a distance between sin and purity. So when someone is in purity, they're distant from sin. And when someone is in sin, they're distant from purity. So both of them don't coincide together. They are adversaries. They are verses. They are opponents. When someone operates in purity, there is a hatred for disobedience. There's a hatred for missing God. And there's a hatred for anything that God has not scheduled for your eyes, your ears, or your mouth to speak. There's even a divine schedule for your mouth. There are certain things that are not supposed to be spoken. When Elijah prayed to die, that was something never should came out of his mouth. When Elijah said that there's only, I'm the only prophet left. That was something that shouldn't have came out of his mouth. When Balaam argued with God about the salvation of Nineveh, that was something that never should have came out of his mouth. So there's a schedule for the mouth. The mouth is not supposed to say everything. And you got to be careful that in hostile situations or pressured situations that you don't discover words that should have never been uttered by you. If you look at the speech of Job, he started off well, then ended off a little shaky because the intensity of pressure. I think that's Proverbs chapter 24. That say, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. I think that's Proverbs 24. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small, which means that the day of adversity is the day of pressure. Adversity is is where what you dislike happens. Adversity is a confrontation with anything that's not your pick, your preference, your liking. Adversity is where Satan has an opportunity to flex against you. 
So adversity is where darkness seems to overshadow light. Wickedness seems to overshadow wisdom. And burdens seem to overshadow blessings. Who can say that they have made their heart clean and you're pure from sin? You have an authority to direct your mind into a bath, into a shower, into a washing of the word. Studying and reading is a divine method that God has created to purge yourself. Studying and reading. Information at work through the eyes. Studying and reading is information at work through the eyes. Your eyes is a channel for salvation. It's a channel for liberty. So what your eyes view It could transform the nature and the personality in which you have. It could change your appetite. People go to certain restaurants because of the viewing of the restaurant. They saw it, so they desired it. What you see becomes a temptation or an option. Sight is so powerful that the serpent took the woman to see the tree. Mary Magdalene went to the tomb to see Jesus' body. Sight carries a confirmation of a reality. But the word said that we walk by faith and not by sight, which shows that if you stay in the realm of faith, you could dictate your sight. And when you dictate your sight inwardly, it could create the sight that you want to see outwardly eventually. Due time is when the sight that you saw inwardly becomes the sight you see outwardly. Due time. And when somebody is in due time, whatever they saw in their imagination, they now see in their possession. You make your heart clean by visuals. You see, you study, you watch, you pray, you listen, you hear. You work out the salvation with fear and trembling and working out is a painful realm of transformation. Working out is a painful realm of deliverance. So working out is where you exert effort towards an expected change. Working out, this is so powerful, man. <laughs>